Good evening, welcome to Question Time. Tonight, it's London's turn to ask the questions. With me tonight, Ruth Kelly, Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government, David Davis, Shadow Home Secretary, Martin Amis, one of Britain's most influential writers, Jeff Randall, editor-at-large of the Daily Telegraph, and the broadcaster and columnist, Mariella Frostrup. Well, hello, the audience um, put the questions tonight and the panel don't know what's going to be asked of them, so let's have the first one straight away. Oh, by the way, if you want to comment on what's being said, text us, the number on the screen, and CFAX 155 will tell you what's being said. Elaine Mulvaney, please, for a first question. What advice should Tony Blair have given to George Bush, Bush today? What advice should Blair have offered Bush today? Martin Amis. Um, what advice, I think, is... Um a pretty exalted word for what he might be offering George Bush. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, what is, what is new in, the, in the, the Baker study group thing? I mean, as we've known for weeks, the only new thing in the report is that he should talk to Iran and Syria. Um, so perhaps the best bit of advice Blair could give Bush would be don't say to, Syria, to Iran that um, we won't ask for your help until you do everything we want. That is not logical. Um, you know, start to feel your way into the diplomacy of the region. I think uh, you know, everything you say now is, on this subject is, is desperate, but that, that is the only way forward suggested by this new study. And, and, uh, and they clearly gave the impression they weren't going to speak at least for the moment. Well, he, well, Bush takes it as a sign of weakness. And America has very legitimate uh, casus belli with Iran. It goes back a long way. And, you, and um, that old joke about Bush saying after the invasion, when people were saying actually Iran is the enemy, he said, maybe I should appoint a spell check czar, um, which looked horribly frivolous at the time, but in fact is, is pretty accurate. Um, from the, the hostage taking, the Cobalt Towers, the, the, the Marines who were murdered and blown up in Beirut, um, and constant uh, agitation, espionage from Iran, whereas Iraq hasn't laid a glove on us for decades. So there is a great backlog of hostility between the US and Iran. Mariana Frost. Well, I, I suspect that Tony Blair. Uh, was saying to George Bush what he's been saying to him for quite some time, which is that he should pursue a, a more diplomatic route, because um, Tony Blair is many things, but he's certainly not a fool. Uh, but I also think that, that, that the real issue here is that nobody's surprised, it seems to me, apart from George Bush, uh, about what's happening in Iraq. Most of the people who opposed the war and many people who were pro the war uh, realized very swiftly that this was a disaster unfolding. And the question now is not who is to blame and how wrong we've been and, and, and you know, what we shouldn't have done, but what the hell we're going to do now. Because you can't just pull out and leave those people in the dire, terrible, terrible situation they're in now. And we have to find a way uh, to improve the situation. And, uh, you know, it's all very well, you know, everyone sitting around pointing their fingers at each other. But now is the time for positive action. You just have to look at the news every night and, and your heart breaks for what ordinary people in Baghdad and in the rest of the country are living through. And we are largely responsible for their misery. Okay. Jeff Randall. Well, if I were Tony Blair, I'd be saying to George Bush, uh, George, whatever you do, don't start from here. Because uh, to pinch a line from Martin Amos's uh, new book, uh, you now have the worst of all possible outcomes. Um, frankly, your credibility is shot in the Middle East. More than 2,000 American soldiers have died. And by the way, the country's in a mess. And I think pressing on from here is a loser's strategy. You said it wasn't going to be Vietnam, George. Well, it's turned out pretty much like that. I don't think there can be an elegant exit for the United States from here. But I do think that they have to think about an exit. 
It's going to be a painful one for everybody, but they have to manage that political disaster. So the advice to George is not something that he'll want to hear, but I think he's going to have to hear it pretty soon. Okay. You, sir. Does it really matter what advice Tony Blair gives to George Bush? I mean, he'll end up doing anything he wants to do and we'll probably just tag along anyway. Is that an accurate description of the relationship, Ruth Kelly? Well, I don't think it is, actually, and it's a, it's a really serious question. I mean, what should the US, the UK and others involved in Iraq do now? I mean, I don't think Jeff is right. I don't think it would be responsible for us just to walk out of Iraq, our troops to withdraw support, when the Iraqi um, government is an incredibly fragile state, when it's trying to build up its capacity, when it is a sovereign government democratically elected by 8 million Iraqi people, which is relying on uh, the forces there uh, to, uh, to provide security to its people. Now, it's obviously got passing through extremely difficult times. But we've got a responsibility. I mean, we took action, and we've now got to see it through in the best way that we can. Now, what advice I think uh, the Prime Minister should give George Bush is, this is an amazing opportunity provided by the Iraq Study Group report. It's a serious piece of work, thoroughgoing piece of analysis. It plots, uh, charts a way forward, uh, which you know provides the best opportunity that we've got for resolving the situation. Um, if we work with the Iraqi government, uh, if uh, Syria and Iran can be persuaded to take some responsibility themselves uh, for working alongside their neighbours and supporting the democratically elected government, refocus on the Middle East question, because if you make some progress on the Middle East, everything becomes a lot easier. If, it, if he follows well, that course, that it, it is. Makes. Yes, but uh, I mean, it, it's the argument that's laid out in the Iraq study report. I think actually most people think that a resolution of the Middle East crisis, or at least some progress, uh, would make things a lot easier. Now, this is a you, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't deal, just to get it clear, you, you think government shouldn't deal with Iran unless they can get them to back off on the nuclear issue. Well, in other words, a quid pro quo. Asking well, them look, both to do that. The UK and government has been talking to, to uh, Iran and Syria um, for months and indeed years. But the question is what are the terms of the debate? What are you talking to them about? Are they at the table making the decisions alongside you? Now, if they're going to be at the table, if they're going to have that responsibility, then you need to know that it's on the basis that they're taking their uh, responsibility seriously and they're going to work with you against the terrorists who are operating in Iraq rather than with the terrorists. And, you know, that just has to be made clear. Okay. Do you think we're winning or losing? Well, I think um, the question is, how do we make a success of it from now? It's obviously incredibly difficult times. We're losing. <coughs> may, may I say that... Um, losing, you know, what, what, what did we ever think we were going to win? I mean, okay. we say we're losing. What are we actually losing? Okay.